Hi and welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and today I'm going to be reviewing David Regal's Colour Changing Knives. Before I get on with it, uh, can you please like, subscribe, check the little bell icon so you know when I'm going live. I did an impromptu, well, I wasn't really impromptu, I planned it a little bit, uh, impromptu live this morning. So uh, make sure you do press the bell icon, then you will get notifications of that and other stuff that I do. Uh, and of course, check out cardmagiccourse.com. This is sponsored by Card Magic Course, which really means it's my Card Magic Course, and I mention it at the beginning and the end of every video. But that's what fuels the whole thing. Obviously, I don't get paid for this, um, but I do get paid a little bit for that if you sign up. So please do just go and check it out, read the blog and see what, uh, blog and see what you think. Uh, right, let's get on with it. So, Colour Changing Knives. I've, this is, I was going to say guilty pleasure. It's not a guilty pleasure. I don't know why I said that. I suppose I said that because some people think that it's one of those tricks, a little bit like uh, Lincoln Rings, a little bit like Cups and Balls, all these things that I really love that, that I've heard people sort of, sort of be a bit sniffy about. I suppose because they're props made for that thing. Of course, they're pen knives, but they're, they're, they're kind of of that old school uh, classic uh, school of magic, which are old school school of magic. That doesn't make sense, does it? But you know what I mean? And I love it. I've always loved it. And it, it, I'll tell you a little story, which is probably won't interest, in you, interest you, but it's why I, I, I've always been fascinated with the colour changing knives. When I first learnt magic, I worked in a magic shop for about a month in Manly in Sydney, Australia. And I didn't know anything about magic. And I was kind of teaching myself. I was picking up little bits literally off the shelves and going, oh, I teach myself that. And it was great. It was like I'd, I'd never seen any magic, no close-up magic at all. I'd seen a little bit of stuff on telly, but, you know, Bunko Boov and Paul Daniels, and I'd seen stuff like this, but I was just utterly fascinated. Well, I wasn't a kid. I was like 19, 20, I think. Uh, and I saw these knives, and they had these knives in there, but they didn't have any instructions. And I would take them out, and I couldn't work out how they could be magical. There were these couple of colours and they didn't do anything. I was kind of seeing if there's anything that could move in them um, and nothing. And, and and I became quite fascinated with what you did with them. This was before the internet, so you couldn't look anything up. And of course I could have got books and stuff, but I was travelling around uh, at the time other than this, this time I spent in the shop. Um, and it kind of played on me a little bit. I kind of wanted to know what they did. And then when I finally saw it, I thought it was really magical and really amazing. And it, it was irrelevant that it was knives really. It was these little objects that were changing colours, and, and, and I, I found it really beguiling, I, I loved it. So uh, that was my kind of interest where it started, and, and I've always really loved the idea of it. I, I remember seeing Bill Malone do it on one of his, his DVDs, obviously, obviously Tamar Ritz does it, um, uh, Ascanio does a lot of work on the knives, so there's something that kind of keeps coming back with them, that they, they haven't kind of gone away, and, and, and this is the latest... Uh, release as Scotty York, of course. So that's the other set of knives I have got. And when I thought David Regal was releasing these, I was thinking, well, what's what's going to be different about them? Are they just going to be a set of knives? Uh, and the differences are subtle but very important. I'll go through a few of them. The first thing is I'll show you one. The, the they're they're a larger knife. They're not, they're not big, but they're large, meaning they just look a little bit more substantial. This is important. There's a feel to these that's different. Now, my Scotty York knives, which I really, really like, um, they just feel... A, I've always felt like they feel a little bit insubstantial. And that's not just because I've got these. It's not confirmation bias. I haven't got these and gone, oh, yeah, they do feel... They, they've always felt... And he says... David said in the, in, his, um, in the download of this that he always felt that they were lacking something. And I've also felt the same, which is why I think I've never really taken them out. They didn't feel kind of meaty enough for me. They felt a little bit trinkety for me. And even though the differences are subtle, these do feel like they, they've got a bit of weight to them. They do look a bit, a bit more substantial. And that's not just the feel of them, that's the look of them. And he says, David says, I think he says um, that the effect has more real estate or something like that, if there's, if there's more of a colour on them. Which means that when they do change colour, there's more colour to change, if you see what I mean. And that is, again, quite important. If it's more visual and they're, and they're, they're more striking and there's more of, for the eye to see, then the change is more is bigger. And I, I, I kind of agree with that. When these do change, they do look, look like they kind of look bigger. And they sit, sit in the hands bigger. Um, they've also got these things, these bolsters. They're, now, most knives come with two of these bolsters, these, um, these metal bolsters. And this has one, which means 
you, there's, again, there's more to see when you hold them, but also if you're a beginner and you're a little bit um, shaky and nervous about how the, doing the trick for the first few times, you can put the bolster at the front and it will kind of give you a, a little bit more forgiveness with the angles, uh, which is interesting. The it has what a lot of knives have with these feel the texture so when you're in your pocket you know what knife is what because of the texture um the the finale is this um this where is it oh, there it is this swiss army knife that, that's how you the, the finale should you choose to do it um has a swiss army knife which has no bolsters so when you have a change from from like a black one to that there's even more to it and, and he says it does actually look like a swiss army knife it's not the first set to use a swiss army knife idea but usually it just turns into a red knife where well, this actually looks like you know it's got a logo on it it's got the lack of bolsters it looks like a big change and all the changes are really significant as well meaning i've seen sets of knives where you have one color change for another color and they're kind of similar it's a little bit like copper silver sometimes if you've got a sort of copper and a silver that isn't really shiny people have to kind of look twice to see that change and that can happen in knives so again we've got this we've also got the the, the rivets that are on the knives and again when you change it to the swiss army knife you've got um you've got no texture no bolster and no rivets so again you've got more of a change so all these little subtle things i think make a make it worthwhile to release this uh, and there's more to them that, that David goes into. Oh, and the, the, you know, if you can hand them out at the beginning of the routine, at the beginning, very important of the routine, um, to show, and, and if they do get them out, which they probably won't, but if they were to have a look, they, they look sharp and they feel like real knives, but they're not super sharp, so nobody's going to really hurt themselves. Don't quote me on that. If you get someone, then it pings back on their fingers, it might hurt. Um, and don't say Steve said I could do that and blame me. So don't do it. <laughs> All right. So that's the main, I think, the gist of the, the why David's released these and why those differences are important to him. It doesn't belittle the orig original knives, of course. It's just, a, it's just a preference, and I tend to agree with the preference. The routine itself is, is a simple routine. He has a script. So it's, it's very David, the script. It's kind of based on a story. He says it's a true story. So I wouldn't take that word for word, but you can take ideas from it. Um, but the routine is, is simple, and that's important. I think some knives... Uh, knife routines can actually get a little a bit like coin routines can get a bit complicated and there's these finales that get a bit silly sometimes and they take away from the initial thing what this has is it in in it is three transpositions and then a change so that's what's happening it isn't change 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 it's it's the, the knives are changing places um twice in the hands once in the pockets of course you can play with this and you can do it and you can and once you learn it i think you will i think you'll be able to improvise around the idea and it, as it uses one move and then this change at the end into the swiss army knife so there's a lot of scope for um improvisation around this and a lot of scope for for using um different routines and stories and and it, it's kind of a versatile effect and that's i think that's why it kind of it, it keeps coming back um the, the couple of things about the download it's more than you think it's not just telling you how to do the routine uh, there's a lot of subtleties. I love David's books and, and his knowledge comes over in a download as well. He tells you why. It's not just here's how to do the trick, which is a problem I have with a lot of downloads. It's like, I, I, I kind of know how to do it, but I want to know why you do that. And I, he does go into that. We do this because of this. I show this here because it looks more natural. There's a lot of it looks more natural if you do this. Um, and, you know, like the, the, the people can look at the knives beforehand, but not at the end because you don't want to kill that moment. They're responding. You don't want to go, hey, and have a look at them. But beforehand, they can deal with them. He has got a lovely bit at the end where he goes into lots of different changes. So he's got his basic routine, and I don't mean basic, easy, as in it is quite easy. It's not a difficult, this isn't sort of knuckle-busting sleight of hand, but there is practice involved. You have to get it looking natural. I think the hardest thing with the knives is to make those moves look natural, those changes look natural and not too, um, oh, what's the word? I, I don't know what the word is. I have no idea what the word is. Oh, it's a simple one as well. I can't think of a word and it's really... Deliberate. There you go. <laughs> Another really complex um, word that I've forgot, forgotten there. So, uh, you know, it's got all that stuff in it. So it is a little bit of a, a mini masterclass in knives, actually. He's got, like, a, a lot of different changes that he doesn't use necessarily in his original routine, routine. But he shares with you so you can start bringing your own in. He's got the... You know, he's got... Uh, if I... If I um, Actually, I'll, I'll put it on another video, but he's got the, the revolving change. He's got the simple change. Um, the, he's got a lovely change with a, 
with a napkin or a, or a silk that is really, really nice. That when he got a silk out, I thought, this isn't going to be very good, isn't it? But it's actually a really nice change in the story he comes up with, uh, with where that change come about as well. So basically, after this, you're going to have everything you need to put your own routine together as well, which I think is really important. Um, you know, because of the... Simplicity is not the word. Because of the nature of the routine, um, you are going to want to to play with it. Unless you want to really geek out, you don't really need anything else to learn the knives themselves, let alone this routine. So you, you get a lot of bang for your buck here. You get some really beautifully made knives. They feel nice in the hand, like I've said. They look good. Um, and I am definitely, the, without a doubt, this, this is going in my, with my routine. A lot of stuff that I review, even if I love it, won't go into my work because it just doesn't fit. But I love these. Um, I love the linking rings. I do them, you know. If there's certain people around that I think that'll fit with that, something visual, something pretty, something nice. Uh, not just kids, but adults as well. Sometimes the linking rings can go down really well. And this, it falls into that camp. It's good, classic sleight of hand for a reason, and it keeps coming back, and we love it for a good reason. Um... It won't fit everybody, but it suits me, and uh, and I think David's released a solid set of knives here. And and if, if anybody's going to know what they're talking about, he does. You know, he is a professional, and he and he and he, he knows his stuff. Uh, so that's David Regal's color changing knives. Um, the angles wise, I'm, I'm not. I don't really have to go into all this story, but angles wise, okay, certain angle um, angles are problematic, but mostly not. You can do this pretty much surrounded if you kind of know what you're doing. Difficulty. Um, I think most people can learn this. If you can perform, if you can relax, that's the key to this. You relax when you perform this. It's not this kind of, this, this forced thing that people do when they show both sides of the knives. It's nice and relaxed. You know, you don't, you don't have to over-egg it and it's a beautiful routine. Uh, so for, I would say from kind of intermediate uh, above. Uh, so thank you very much. Please like, subscribe. All the details will be below. Thank you so much um, to David for sending me these. I really, really appreciate it. I can't do it without people sending me stuff because um, I'm going to work because it's locked down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thanks a lot. And, uh, and have a great one. Uh, check out carmagiccourse.com. I can't remember if I say that, said that, but you can't say it too many times. Carmagiccourse.com um, is the thing that powers the whole thing. So if you want to support the channel and support your learning, because it is a phenomenal course. I know I'm biased, but I'm so, so proud of it. Check it out. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.